we're going to use the factor theorem to show that x minus c is a factor of polynomial. We're not really using the factor theorem. We're going to divide and prove that it's true. We're going to find real zeros of polynomials if we're given some of them. We're going to find rational zeros of polynomials. And we're not really going to use the rational root test, but we're going to talk about how you can use the rational root test to determine if what you're looking at is a reasonable answer or not. And then we're going to find real zeros of polynomial. No, yeah, same thing, real zeros. And then we're going to find all the zeros. And finally, we're going to be able to write equations of polynomials. Now, most <coughs> folks, when they do this whole polynomial thing, <coughs> and do zeros, they separate out the kinds of zeros. They have you do real zeros first, and then they have you do complex zeros. This book squishes them all together, but they still ask the questions as if they've broken them up. So you have to read your questions carefully to know what you're being asked for. So for example, we need to know when we're asked for rational <coughs> zeros, what it is we're looking for. What are rational numbers? What? Uh, no, you have to define them not as not something, but as something. They're real world numbers? No. Numbers that can be written as a fraction? Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction, where they have an integer divided by an integer and zeros not on the bottom. Those are rational zeros. Our real zeros are what? Anybody got a suggestion? No, they're not opposite. Rational zeros also happen to be real. <coughs> Not what? No, there's more than just whole numbers there. Whole numbers are an example of a real number, though. <coughs> Is it any number? <coughs>
90x minus 144 and divide it by x minus c, or in this case that would be 3. Positive 3? Yes. x minus 3. And what should my remainder be? 0. It should be 0. So, how do I want to do this division to get that, to prove that that's going to be true? Synthetic. Synthetic, yes. Synthetic will make life much nicer. What number is going to go outside my synthetic division? 3. The 3. What numbers are going to go inside my synthetic division? 1, negative 17, 90, and negative 144. So now, remember when I do my synthetic division, I start out by bringing down the 1. Then I multiply 3 times 1 and get 3. Write that under my negative 17. Negative 17 plus 3 is negative 14. Then I have 3 times negative 14, which is negative 30. Negative 42. 42. 90 <coughs> plus a negative 42 48. is a positive 48. Bless you. And then 3 times 48 is 144. <coughs> Bless you. And negative 14 plus 100, I mean negative 144 <coughs> plus 144 is 0. So that's what I should have gotten. I have, in this, what I have done is I have verified. So that gives me x equals, I mean, excuse me, x minus 6 equals 0, <coughs> and x minus 8 equals 0. This gives me x equals 6, and this gives me x equals 8. Now, here's my question for you. This problem said find all <coughs> the other zeros. What should my answer be if this was the question in my work? 3, 6, 6, six no. 0, 8, 0. Nope. Six, 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 comma eight. Six, six, eight. comma eight. Zeros, when it asks for zeros, those are the x values, only x values, that make the function equal to zero. So the value six and the value eight. Why did we not include three? Because it said others and it had told us that one already. I point this out because some of the problems say find the others and other problems say find all of them. To find all of them, we would include the 3 as well as the 6 and the 8 in the answer. If you get one of those and it's driving you nuts, just send me an email and I will tell you, oh, it's because it only wanted the others that you found that told you this one, or you're missing the one it gave you. 